Hey there, it's Marianne from Thrive Admin Services. In this video, I'm going to show you the back end of a Microsoft form and what you can do with the results that come in once people actually start filling those forms in and giving you their data. So we've spent a lot of time, everybody worries about what happens at the front end and how pretty it looks and how to get it out to people. But today, this video is gonna show you how that data is managed and sorted and presented by Microsoft and how you can extract it and use it in a couple of different ways. So we'll be looking at it as a summary, as a graphic representation, and then as an Excel sheet, as well as being able to sort through and see the individual files. I'm working on, so Forms is available on the web. It's a web-based product. So I'm working on a Mac or using Google Chrome as my internet browser. So if you use a different browser or you're on a PC, the window may look slightly different to my video, but all of the functions and features are web-based and available to everybody who has access to Microsoft Forms. So let's get started. Okay, so to access our forms and be able to see the data that's come in, the first thing we need to do is go to office.com. And if you haven't gone to this dashboard before, you'll need to log in. From the app launcher at the very top, we're then going to forms. If it's not showing in this list of apps, then you'll find it here alphabetically forms and it will open in a new tab. So this will now show you all of the forms that you have. And I'm going to look at this one, which is a form that I've used in some of my workshops, but I wanted to show you how the data comes in at the back view. So it's all branded up and really great. Um, and what happens is I get this option here. I'm just going to zoom that in so it's a little bit clearer. Um, so up here, we've got the questions. So this is where you would actually be entering your data. And here we've got the responses. So you can see I've had 50 responses on this one. Now there are a couple of ways we can view the data and I wanted to show you the different ways that the data comes back in and is presented inside forms and how you can use that. So this shows me that I've had 50 responses it's taken people an average of about three minutes to complete. And I can view the results here. I can open them in Excel or I've got them all listed here. So let's look at them in this format. So this area is where Forms is going to produce some graphs or graphical representations for me in charts to help me see the answers in a visual way. So if you would like to present the information from your form to a committee, a board, a company, a client, to an audience in any format, say as a presentation or as a report, this data is really useful. And Microsoft have done all the work for you and you can simply take a snip of this and pop it into your other presentation. So uh, this one's got five questions, I think. Yep, nice and simple. So this one was a yes, no, or maybe, yes, no, or I don't know option. And you can see here, the question was very simply, do you have a Microsoft subscription. So of the 50 responses, we had 43 yes, six no, one I don't know. As I move my mouse across this on the screen, you can see it's showing me the different um, breakdown and what that percentage is. But if I wanted to simply show that data in another way, I'm working on the Mac obviously, so I could take a snip uh, with my screenshot tool and I could do it simply as the image if I wanted. Uh, or I could do the image and this data. And then I can present that as a, an image on another piece of content, whether it's a presentation or a document or um, an email or in a Teams chat, whatever I want to do. So that's one of the ways I can do that. And it comes in different formats depending on the type of question. So this is one where someone has to choose one answer only. This question, allowed them to choose as many of the options as they like. So it was check boxes. And you can see we had, um, I think I had 13 there. And of the 50 responses, you can see we got 50 for Word and Excel, uh, 49 for PowerPoint, all the way down to six for Bookings and Power Automate. Now, I can't change the colors of these graphs. I can save the image, I can copy the image, but I have to accept it in the layout. So if you're particularly looking for a branded chart, you would have to recreate the chart yourself in Canva or in um, Excel or Word. Uh, but if I'm happy enough with the way Forms has put it together, the way Microsoft's done it for me, I've saved myself a whole heap of time and angst. Uh, so this one is done as a bar chart because we can have 
of the 50 users, one person might have ticked all 13. So um, we're not looking at a total percentage there. It does show me when I hover across it, it'll give me the numbers and the, the breakdown, uh, but no other data. This one here is where I'm asking people to rank a statement from completely agree down to completely disagree or not applicable. And it gives me these different colors and then it shows me my percentages. So you can see here I've got, I am confident in using Microsoft 365 products. And you can see we've got 22% completely agree, 52% somewhat, 12% uh, neutral, 12% somewhat disagree and 2% it didn't apply. So these sorts of visual representations are sort of banded. And again, Microsoft is choosing those colors for me. This one here, question four, this is a net promoter score. So this is where people are um, asked on a, um, on a scale of one to 10 or on a scale of one to five, how likely are you to use more elements based on what I've shared with them? So promoters are positive scores, passives are in the sort of center and then detractors are your negatives and you get an overall net promoter score. These would be used in corporate a lot more but it's a, it's again, it's a different visual representation and another way to show your data. And then last but not least, this was just a yes, no again as a pie chart. So I've got graphic, which if you've got visual people in your audience that you need to relay this information to, this is a great way to access that. You can go into view results. And here I'm actually able to look at each individual person's submission. So I might say, oh, I really just would like to know how many people have ticked what, you know, what somebody's ticked everywhere. So someone here's ticked everything. Uh, I can go to this one. It took them 15 seconds longer. They didn't know about Planner to do or Power Automate. Um, and this is how they felt. So I can rummage around and, and sort of interpret the data on an individual basis. So that's looking at the individual results or submissions. And then here, what I can do is I can open it in Excel. So it's going to open it in Excel for me. There we go. It's all right, we'll just, sorry, I've got lots of things open in the background there today. So I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit so that we can see things. Now, because I have not made a form field or a requirement for anybody to include their details, they all come through as anonymous, which is great. So it's completely un, um, unidentified data okay so I can see the date that they did it now remember this will be an American date time which if you're watching and you're from America you're the only one who does date like that so uh, this is month day year and then the time so the ID that they're given is just the number of the submission their start time their completion time email and name are anonymous or blank and then these are their answers. And so here I can, this has been set up as a table in Excel so I can actually filter things out. Um, so I might say, I only wanna see people who have chosen that they somewhat disagree with being confident. And so I can see what they chose on different things here. Okay, so that's viewing it as an Excel sheet. I'm not going to save that. And we'll shrink that one. And then we'll go back here. So the other options that I have, I can delete all my responses. So you can basically start it as a fresh form. You can print a summary. Now the summary is these um, graphic representations and then I can print them out. You used to be able to get a, a PDF, but and you can also get a summary link. So this will actually share the link. So if you've got team members or a committee or a particular audience who need to see the backend data from your form, you can share it with them this way. So there are lots of ways you can manage that data and interpret it and interrogate it and use it in other ways. So I thought it's one of the, it's all well and good to see the front end and see how pretty it is, but knowing what to do with the data once people submit it is a whole other ball game. And this is, this is how you can go through all of that. So there you have it. That's how you can access the data based on the forms that have been submitted by your audience. It's how you can use that data and make the most of it in lots of different ways so that you are actually able to present your findings in ways that will appeal to your audience, whether you've got visual people, whether you've got um, 
people who prefer to read and analyze or whether you're presenting it in a couple of different formats, it gives you some options that way as well. So make sure that when you create a form, you're thinking about how you're going to access and manage that data in the background and what you're going to do with the data at the end. It's really important. So if you have any questions about anything covered in the video, then I would love for you to get in touch with me directly. You can pop a comment on the video here on YouTube. You can get in touch with me on social media. You'll find me hanging out on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Just search for Thrive Admin Services, um, or you can get in touch with me directly. Uh, head to the website thriveadmin.com and submit a contact form. Uh, and I'm always happy to chat all things Microsoft. Have a great day.